Hey, it's Keith Towns, the principal of the CTO Advisor. Melissa's over there somewhere if you're wondering where she's at in this road trip. If you've watched Terraform Tuesdays on Ned, Ned, what is your daily thing that you consistently do every day? Okay, so I have a podcast uh -huh. that's called The Daily Check-In, and I do it every day of the, the work week, and it's just a brief 10-minute uh, thought process on something. It could be something technical, could be something for your career advancement. Uh, you know, it runs the gamut. Uh, sometimes I talk about music, because why not? So I have that, and then what you might be alluding to is I have a YouTube channel where Tuesdays are Terraform Tuesdays. And so every Tuesday, I will either do a live demo of something regarding Terraform, or I'll talk about what's going on in the world of Terraform for a little while and, and keep people informed uh, what's going on. So before we get into Terraform Tuesdays, I have a couple of basic questions for you. Sure. You've been on the CTO Advisor CTO Dose before at a Tech Field Day event, but you've changed careers since. <laughs> a little so bit. first off, what do you do now? Oh, that's a great question. I think if I, if I could summarize what I do is I try to create educational content that is entertaining and informative. That's, that's my main goal in life. And I do that through a series of different channels. I have my YouTube channel, I have my podcast, I create courses for Pluralsight, and I also create content for vendors, but the content I create is meant to educate and entertain and not just you know talk about marketing fluff, right? <laughs> so the great thing that I love about the CTO Advisor Roadshow so far, we've talked to a couple of different types of entrepreneurs. We've talked to a, a couple that's into manufacturing. You're an entrepreneur creating independent educational content, content for Pluralsight, and you have this thing that's kind of morphed into a thing of its own, Terraform Tuesdays. <laughs> yes. And I've been watching on and off some of your uh, daily check-ins and I've watched uh, when they were videos. Are they still videos now? They're just audio now. now doing a daily video was hard. <laughs> I, I tried. I was like, that's ambitious. It is. Uh, doing a daily podcast where it's just audio is a lot easier because I can just press record. And if I mess something up, the editing's a little easier than video. So I went with just, just audio for I'm that. glad you came to your senses because I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel. And I was wondering why, why it wasn't, the only thing I was seeing was Terraform Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. now, now I know. With that said, you've been doing Terraform Tuesdays for how long now? A year now. It started last June. And you have a Pluralsight course on Terraform that you did four years ago. Four years ago, 2017, that's right. Uh, I saw your latest YouTube video and Terraform 1.0 just released. That's true. And that's, for a lot of people, that's surprising. They thought that Terraform was already 1.0. It was like well beyond that, right? Because I know I personally have been using Terraform for the past five years. You would think with the mass adoption, it would be at 1.0. I've, I've I literally were talking to, I was really just talking to a cloud provider today that was talking about uh, building best practice or reference architecture Terraform templates as part of their offering. And then I was like, wait, hold on, it's 1.0. So it's something that's been in production for a long time, yep. but we're just reaching 1.0. This is something that I've seen with a few other projects as well. Explain to me why it's Terraform just now getting to 1.0. Right, so HashiCorp has very specific conditions that they require before they'll move a product to 1.0. And so far, Terraform had satisfi satisfied three of the major pillars, but not the fourth, which was really a, a well-defined and mature and stable workflow and experience. Because they kept changing some of the things in the language of how providers were implemented, they kept changing some core components about how it walked the dependency graph. They weren't comfortable saying it was 1.0. But in the last few major versions that have come out, they've really stabilized all of those features. They're very happy with how the core Terraform Go code is actually written. And now they feel comfortable applying that 1.0 label saying, not only is nothing major going to change until version 2.0 comes out. And in fact, they actually wrote a whole document that promises these are all the things that will not change until 2.0. So you can use these features with confidence that we're not going to pull the rug out from under you. 
And also anything that comes out that's 1.0 will have at least 18 months of support from Terraform. So you can report a bug and you know it's actually gonna get fixed in a patch and you're not just gonna be left stranded with that problem. So that, that was the big deal with 1.0. So let's ask a pre 1.0 question. What is Terraform? <laughs> Terraform is a infrastructure as code tool that allows you to automate the deployment of infrastructure. That's its primary goal. And if you try to use it for more than that, you certainly can, but that's not what it's focused on. So with that said, HashiCorp has a very opinionated view of enterprise IT. You, you, you might look at HashiCorp and think, okay, cloud company mm -hmm. or cloud tooling company, but yes. they're not just a cloud tooling company. They want to, take you through the whole journey of administering cloud. So when you say infrastructure as code, what types of infrastructure? Are we mainly just talking about cloud infrastructure or what? Honestly, anything with an API can be used by Terraform. It uses what's called providers. And providers are plugins for Terraform to talk to different APIs out there. So for instance, if you want to work with AWS, there's an AWS provider it works with the AWS API to create resources and pull information out of AWS. You can use it for anything else. Someone actually built a demo app that talks to the Domino's API to order pizza. <laughs> it's That's an API. Awesome. It so in uh, Terraform, we're talk to anything that has an API, mm -hmm. which kind of goes along my ideas of what be, the idea of infrastructure being redefined. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this concept of infrastructure as code. Sure. When I think about infrastructure, I don't think of code. I think of code as something that walks, works on top of infrastructure, mm -hmm. but not something that I use to define infrastructure. It's becoming much more common to define your infrastructure using code. And I've actually heard it called infrastructure from code instead of infrastructure as code. I, I think we've locked into the term of IAC at this point, mm -hmm. so there's no going back, but I understand the idea behind it. And really conceptually, you want to define your infrastructure in a declarative way and have it, have it be able to be deployed consistently through multiple environments and through multiple iterations and put the whole thing in source control. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, adopting all the development principles that happen in normal software development, but with an infrastructure spin. And Terraform understands and HashiCorp understands that deploying infrastructure is different than writing application code. So there's some caveats there, there's some things you need to be aware of, and just generally the deployment cycle is much longer because you're actually spinning up real resources, not just pushing bits down a pipe. So with that said, I've started to challenge folks, and I like your thoughts on it, on this concept of what is infrastructure. Mm. Because before, we've always thought about infrastructure as compute, storage, networking, security, and some identity. Is identity. One, yeah. Identity is another part of infrastructure. But if you start to abstract infrastructure to either cloud applications, or even services that are built on top of infrastructure, but ultimately consumed mm -hmm. in a consistent way. So let's take AI and okay. uh, this idea that AI is a bunch of algorithms, uh, data injection, data analysis, et cetera, the stuff that's repeatable. If I'm a data scientist, I don't need to go back and instantiate the same set of tools over and over and over again, at least I shouldn't, that's infrastructure. So could when be. I, <laughs> could be, and then when I think of something like Terraform, and if I have an API to my AI infrastructure, I mm -hmm. can now define that as code and give my AI data scientists the same infrastructure consistently, whether it's across uh, a physical infrastructure or a cloud provider or whatever, I'm defining that that experience for the developer. That's one of the right. things I've looked at Terraform as, 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 as I've looked at what does it mean to redefine infrastructure and what does it mean to make that consistently available for those consuming. Right, when I think of infrastructure, I think of a platform. I'm interacting with the platform, I'm building a platform for somebody else. And that's the way I think about it is, 
the consumer doesn't want to know about the underlying platform too much. Mm -hmm. They just want it to exist and to take advantage of it. So in your AI example, I, as the infrastructure admin, might be responsible for setting up the virtual instances that run that. I might be responsible for setting up the Jupyter Notebooks where you're going to put your information. I might be responsible for setting up the roles in IAM that mm -hmm. give you the permissions to run all this stuff. For me, that's all part of infrastructure. And then you can run with that and just deploy your code. So whatever gets you able to deploy your code or configuration easily, for me, that's the infrastructure layer. And it's interesting because we tend to think of just cloud and all these virtual resources that I'm spinning up with Terraform, but there's there's actually bare metal providers out there that have Terraform providers available. Uh, available. One good example is Equinix mm -hmm. purchased Packet, yes. which is now called Equinix Metal. There's a provider for Equinix Metal. So I can spin up bare metal servers in Equinix using Terraform lay down a full VMware install on that, also using Terraform, and then configure that VMware install using Terraform. And I've actually done that. And it's wild to go from what is bare metal all the way up to a fully deployed uh, vSphere cluster, all by just executing a Terraform command. So who, con who consumes Terraform? What are they called? Are they recipes? What, what, what is the Terraform? Configurations. Or so modules are the two terms, yeah. So who consumes Terraform modules? Is this something that we expose to developers or is this something mm -hmm. that only operators would use? So as a infrastructure uh, admin or engineer, I'm the one holding, I know I control and, uh, and, and define the Terraform modules, mm -hmm. but am I the only one consuming them? Not necessarily. I like to break it into two groups and I'm actually borrowing this from somebody else. Uh, Producers and consumers. So the producers are the ones that are going to write the modules that will be consumed by somebody else. And that places some guardrails for the consumer on what's actually getting deployed. And you can publish those modules to a Terraform registry, whether it's a private or a public one. And so now I have this catalog of modules that I as the consumer can take advantage of. Maybe I'm a software developer, maybe I'm a data scientist. It could be at a number of different levels. And you can even throw an abstraction on top of that and maybe put some sort of web UI where I just go and click, 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 deploy this module. It's using Terraform in the background, but I don't even need to know that. All I need to know is I need my data scientist environment over in US East 2. Click, click, click. There you go. And it's using Terraform and I never knew. So a little bit more advanced question that uh, seems like it's Terraform inception. Can I terraform terraforms? So does terraform have an <laughs> API? And then I can take, so I got the Y axis, I talked to a cloud provider today. Sure. And they talked about uh, creating terraform modules and making those available to their customers. Sure. And I, one of the problems that we, we run into when it comes to reference architectures or whatever is that you, you have to kind of do too much customization to the thing to make it useful. So you might as well have started out and wrote it from scratch yourself. Right. Unless it's extensible. So if I have a Terraform module that gives me the, the basic components and then I can call that module from another Terraform or another app or mm -hmm. something to do it, can I Terraform Terraform? Absolutely. You can invoke modules from other Terraform modules and build that way. So I can get some basic building blocks. Maybe I produce a building block for networking and one for virtual machines, another one for Kubernetes. I can stitch those all together in a configuration that works for my use case, but still stay within the catalog of what my producer, what my operators are giving me. So that's absolutely supported. The other question, and I don't know if you realize you're even asking this, is there's a product from HashiCorp called Terraform Cloud. Hmm which they have a Terraform Enterprise product. Terraform Cloud is the enterprise version of their product, but they host it for you. And that actually will run your Terraform code in a runner for you and track it, and you can hook it into your source control with triggers, so it'll actually trigger a build when you make a new commit or a merge in your source control. So that, in that way, there's actually an API for Terraform Cloud that has a Terraform provider, so you can build your Terraform Cloud configuration using Terraform. So, <laughs> with that said, a lot that 
last part of the conversation is super heady. For those listening to this on audio, uh, you might be confused or even watching it on video. I don't know how, <laughs> how that made it even less confusing. <laughs> no. But if people wanted to learn more about Terraform, how do they get your unique perspective and uh, educational view about Terraform? Sure. Well, uh, two great resources for that. Uh, one, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's Ned in the Cloud. So if you just search that on YouTube, you'll immediately find it. Uh, the other option is to go to Pluralsight. And I have, I think, I want to say five different courses on Terraform today that go into getting started, deep dive, and then how do you use Terraform specifically on Azure or AWS. So all of those courses are available right now. There's also a certification. So if you're thinking about getting the Terraform Associate Certification, I've written a study guide for that with Aiden Ermey. So that is also available. You can go to my website, nedinthecloud.com to find the guide and links to all my plural site and YouTube content. So Ned, thanks for one fabulous dinner. For those of you who don't know, we're in Ned's kitchen and he made homemade pasta, homemade uh, tomato sauce and a uh, wonderful salad. So I ate a salad today, so it was, it was uh, wonderful. Thanks for help hosting me in Melissa Absolutely. in your home. If you wanna find out more about the CTO Advisor, you can find me, follow me on the web. TheCTOAdvisor.com is the website. At CTO Advisor is the Twitter handle. Uh, DMs are open. If you wanna learn more about me or Ned, go ahead and DM me that Twitter handle. Ned 1313. And we'll talk about that off camera, why it's Net 1313. <laughs> talk to you next, CTO Advisor, CTO Dose on the Road.